And we want to thank you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation to rest upon each and every one of us that we might see clearly that our hearts might be filled with light to see what the Lord has done for every individual. And we thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. So many times we, we talk about all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and that's true. We know that. And that's what Adam did. Adam made us all sinners. And we have hammered that, I think, over the years pretty well. Does everybody agree to that? I mean, we beat that to death, haven't we? Do you, do you agree with that? We've beat that to death, and that's true. And there's some folks need to know that. But let's, let's look at the good news here tonight. First, we want to look at uh, verse 18. Well, then, as one man's trespass, isn't that amazing? One man's false step and falling away led to condemnation for all men. We all suffered because of that one man's disobedience. And I think of Putin over there, all the people that are suffering. I think of Hamas over there. Just, they voted Hamas in, in Gaza for their government, and their people are suffering over there because of that one idolatry, not idolatry, but uh, pattern of thinking that they want to destroy the Jews. But one man, and we preach that, and we understand that. But look at the next, look at the good news uh, in the rest of that uh, verse. <clears throat> so one man's act of righteousness, that's Jesus Christ, leads to acquittal and right standing with God and life for all men. Now just meditate on that. <clears throat> so we're going to have to move. Now that we have acknowledged our sin, we acknowledge that Adam sinned and made us sinners, Yet Christ comes along and makes us, makes us righteous. Charges dropped, redeemed us. Now, in my thinking, if I'm wrong, correct me. But I think we need to get hung up on what Jesus has done if we're going to have any joy in our life. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? All right. So we want to we go with that. Now, on this side, if I had every chair filled with uh, lost people, what part of that verse would I talk about quite a bit? Somebody tell me. Huh? Yeah, the 18, the first part, right? You see that? I, l I let them know they're sinners, they're lost, and it came about because of one man's disobedience. But I'm talking over here to everybody saved. So I want to talk about what Jesus has done to set us free from what Adam has done and what he has given to us now by his obedience. Does everybody see the picture? Very important we see that. <clears throat> because, and, and I don't say this to be negative, but <sighs> some places I'll just simply say you go to, the only thing they ever talk about is that first part of that scripture. Does everybody understand that? I don't want to hear that no more. I know that. <laughs> Anybody know that? <laughs> I know that. I fought that for years. I want to know who I am in Christ. I want to know and understand my new identification of what the Lord has done. And boy, as I'm combing the scriptures, it's what the Lord has done. It's what the Lord has done for you and me. What the Lord has done. And that's, where I, that's where I'm coming from now, okay? Now, look at verse 19. Verse 19 up here. For just as by one man's disobedience, who is that one man now? Everybody say it. Adam. <laughs> Failing to hear in heedlessness and carelessness that many were constituted sinners. So we were all over here on this side. We were all constituted as sinners. All right. On that side of the cross. <clears throat> So by one man's obedience, the many will be constituted righteous, made acceptable to God, brought into right standing with, with him. Whoosh. Whoosh. 
righteous, acquitted, God's children, a home in heaven, and we could go on and on and on. How many see the picture? Very important that we see the picture because we have an enemy that's constantly putting in our minds those fiery darts that you're still an old sinner. Now let me, let me make something very clear here. Temptation is not a sin. Anybody been tempted? Uh, tempted, that's a good one. <laughs> Anybody's been tempted this week? Yeah, all the time. Yeah, that's not sin. But if you put it down as sin, then you're going to go around and around and around and around. The devil's just going to be on you, and you just feel so condemned and so unworthy and just an old sinner, which you are not. You were just tempted, but if you put it down, so as a man thinketh in his heart, what? So is that man. So you're tempted and you think, oh, I sinned. Have you ever done it? Come on. Come on. I'm talking to the right crowd. If you're alive, you've done that. See, you've got to discern the accusations and the, and the enemy, how he accuses you putting you back over there with the first Adam, and you got to say, no, I'm over here with the last Adam. The last Adam, through obedience, he made me righteous. I didn't make myself righteous. My Lord made me righteous. My Lord acquitted me. My Lord redeemed me. My Lord has sanctified me. My Lord brought me back to God. So we want to stay on that side of the cross in the kingdom of God. He has taken us out of, the, of that side, the kingdom of darkness, and he's put us on this side of the kingdom of the Son of God. We are in the kingdom of the Son of God now. Hold that position. because The enemy will try to get you back over there. And you'll walk around just absolutely under the control of the enemy, okay? So we want to see that. So by one man's obedience, the many will be constituted righteous, made acceptable to God, brought into right standing with him. If you're in right standing with God, raise your hand. That's everybody in here. And how did you get in that position? Jesus. Thank God you accepted it. Hold your position. Don't move from that position. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit is well equipped to let us know if we do something wrong. Don't be going around all day long feeling condemned and feel like you're, you've done something wrong. And I said, well, what have you done wrong? You said, I don't know. I've talked to people like that. Let me tell you, you're under the accusation of the enemy. He's making you feel that way. Rebuking. We overcome him, how? By what? The blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. What is the word of our testimony? The blood has cleansed me, redeemed me. I'm a child of God. I belong to God. I'm in the kingdom of God. God's my heavenly Father. Now beat it out here, devil. Hold that position. His life, his life will just come to the surface in your inner man. You will come alive. And most of you, I see you're coming alive. That's why when you come in here, I see you talking. I see you interacting with one another. As your shepherd, that tells me a lot. If your kids are out in the playground and they're slugging it out, what does that tell you? <laughs> if they're out there playing and sharing and, uh, you know, really... You just, you just look, you look through the window and you, wow, God, thank you, you know. You're just so happy that they're treating each other right, you know. And, and that's how the Lord is. That's how I am when I see God's people getting along and loving one another. Oh, that blesses God, that blesses me. Now, I want to turn to another scripture. <clears throat> I want to turn to Hebrews 7, 18 and 19. We're going to have to deal with, first, the law. What about the law? This is where people many times get involved. So let's examine 
the law. Look at uh, Hebrews 7, 18, then we'll go to 19. So a previous physical re uh, regulation and command is canceled. I wonder what that was. Canceled. Because of its weakness. That was the law, by the way. And you'll see as we move along. And ineffective and useless to make one holy, to redeem one, to make one accepted in God's eyes. Go to the next verse. For the law never made anything perfect. Ten Commandments. But instead, a better hope is introduced through which we now come close to God. Wow. What could that be? You better catch this. I only come this way one time. <laughs> Go to the next one. And it was not without taking an oath that Christ was made priest. God makes oaths. He, he makes a vow and swears by his own name. And by the way, there is no higher name than his name. So, the law can make, cannot make us perfect. Let's turn to another uh, scripture uh, talking about the law. Turn to Romans 7, 4. Romans 7, 4. So what does God do to set us free from the law? Likewise, my brethren, you have undergone death as to the law. The law is here. He doesn't kill the law because the law is still for those that have not come to Christ yet to show them that they are sinners. Did we see that? That's what the Bible says. Paul says, I would not have known what covenant was unless the law told me that it was sin. So it's not for us, Christians. That means we can break it. No, 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 no. When you walk in the Spirit, the result of walking in the Spirit, you won't break the Ten Commandments. But you could keep every one of these Ten Commandments and go to hell. Why? Because of the disobedience of one man, we all have been constituted as sinners. Do you follow me there? All right. Now, so let's, see, let's just say that I'm an individual that, uh, well, I'm going to get right with God, and I'm gonna, he's going to accept me because I'm keeping his law. So we step one, two, ain't I doing good? Huh? I don't commit adultery, no fornication. I'm getting close to God. Y'all poor sinners down there, look at me. Keeping the commandments, getting close to God. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, I'm doing so great. Oh, oh, help, 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 help. Oh, I only offended in one, but what? Tell me, I'm guilty of them all. Oh, my goodness, guilty of them all. Lord, here I come. I'm going to get close to you. I messed up again, and down. Look at all, everybody <laughs> uh, fall again. Oh, <sighs> oh Lord! Now, everybody knows. Yeah, 
Yeah, but God's up there. I know you're concerned. I know you are. I appreciate that. Lord, don't let me lose my thoughts here. Condemnation on me because I'm, I just messed up one time and guilty of them all. See? That's what the Bible says now. I, I can't turn to every verse of Scripture. I know you know the Bible better than I do, but that's true. Well, I'm going to get close to God. I. Got to get close to God. That's all there is to it. Hey, Jesus. Where are you at, Jesus? Where? Over there? Oh, my goodness. I didn't mean to tell that lie. Oh, I lied. Yield of them all. I was talking to a Pentecostal young man. You can sit down, Willie. Okay. <laughs> I might get on one of my long rabbit trails, you know, you'd be standing up there. And I said, I went over to his bed in the hospital years ago, and I said, Brother, you, you, you're a Christian. Oh, I used to be. I said, Well, why, why aren't you now? Too hard. I don't know if you understand in some churches that if you don't be perfect in every conduct, you backslidden. And you've got to go back to the uh, altar and get saved again. Uh, anybody in here aware of that in some churches? Okay. And this is what I'm talking about. Because they think that one is saved by good works, by keeping the law. And folks, if we could get saved like that, Jesus would not have had to die on the cross. Okay? All right. So, the law is there, and it's holy and good, but we died to it. Don't try to keep it. You know why? I just showed you. You can't. Anybody want to try to stand up here? You get the point? We'll move on. Absolutely. Likewise, my brother and children of faith, you have undergone death as to the law through the crucified body of Christ. Christ was crucified on the cross. Who was crucified with Christ on the cross? Point to yourself. Say, I was. I died when Christ died. Amen? All right. That's very important to understand. Now, you accept that by faith. Not by your feelings. Your feelings will change. Today, hot chat chat in God. Tomorrow, next day, hot chat chat next day. Because now you're in Romans 7. Anybody familiar with Romans 7? The things that I want to do, I don't do. The things I don't want to do, I do. Or the things I don't want to do, I get Susan, uh, Susan to do. <laughs> and that's, that's that uh, struggle that we're having with the flesh now and the Holy Spirit. And so that war goes on for a while until you finally come to that place. And I'll show you. In just a little bit, come to that place. All right, but let's finish this. So that now you may belong to another. Everybody say, I belong, I belong. to another. God Almighty. He bought me by his own blood. I belong to him. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. To him who was raised from the dead, that's Christ, 
in order that we may bear fruit for God. Trying to keep the Ten Commandments, you'll never bear fruit for God. Condemnation, you're in the enemy territory. The law is holy, it's perfect, but it's not for us. Oh, do we keep it? Sure we keep it, because we walk in the Spirit. You see that? The result of walking in the Spirit, the result of work, walking in the Spirit is that we keep the commandments. You don't strain at it. That's a byproduct of walking in the Spirit. That's the fruit of righteousness, which is... Don't try to keep the Ten Commandments. We just follow the Lord. And if the Holy Spirit shows me that I've done something wrong, I know we all know exactly what to do. 1 John 1, 9. Everybody say, 1 John 1, 9. Now we're back on the road again. In the Spirit. Walking in the Spirit. Okay? Walking in love. That's why the Holy Spirit was given to us to teach us, and even to show us things yet to come. Now, some of you might still be struggling in Romans 7, okay? Now, we're in Romans 7 right there. Uh, go back, that's four, okay, look what it says. <clears throat> go to the next verse now. Verse 5. When we were living in the flesh, when we were living in the flesh, what? Over here, well, let's see. Better put it over here with the law. We were living in the flesh, mere physical lives. We had no spiritual life in us. We didn't care nothing about God. We'd done our own thing, whatever, whatever we ever. The sinful passions that were awakened, notice this, and aroused up by what the law makes sin. So the law makes covenant sin. I didn't know covenant was sin until the law showed me it was sin and then it roused that up into me. Hey, I'm sinning. I'm coveting or I'm talking about somebody or I'm pointing the finger or I'm judging wrongly or I, uh, I'm stealing. And the law pointed that out to me that, hey, that was sin and it was roused up into me, oh my, I'm sinning. Do we understand that? It's been important that we understand that. All right, now. We, and, and roused up by what the law makes sin. We're constantly operating in our natural powers in the body organs. And so... <clears throat> Now that we know what the law says, and I start to steal something, then that, hey, I'm sinning. I'm sinning. And we become sin conscious. Okay? All right, let's move on a little bit further. We're constantly operating in our natural powers, in our body, or in the sensitive appetites and wills of the flesh, so that we board fruit for death. So my eyes was on the law, excuse me, John, law. So I look at the law, it roused that something in me, that's wrong, I shouldn't do that, in that vicious circle of sin and death, sin and death, sin and death. Romans chapter 8 verse 2. For the law of the Spirit, that's the Spirit over there, the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death that the law stirs up in me and makes me know I just seem to always be sinning. And I'm conscious of sin. And therefore condemnation is on me. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this? Paul says, in Romans 7. And he found out that the Lord did. Already delivered him. And he's not under the law. He died to the law. He was crucified with Christ. And now he is over here. 
walking in the Spirit. So I'm not trying to keep the Ten Commandments because if you are, then all you're going to do is be tossed flesh and spirit. The things I want to do, I don't do. I can't seem to do, and vice versa. Everybody see that? Sin and death. You sin and it brings death to you. Not physical at that moment, but you're just down and out, depressed. Your body picks up all this anxiety. You can't live this Christian life. Right. Now you're getting smart. You can't. Boy, I didn't hear. Until you understand what the Lord has done. He killed you. You are dead. That part of you trying and failing, trying and failing, died with Christ. And we rose again from the dead. When Christ was raised from the dead, we was raised from the dead. And now we serve another. Oh, we're still tempted. We could still sin. But I don't go around all day long thinking that I'm sinning. Because if you do, so is a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Remember what I said, your emotions do not know the difference between reality and falsehood. Mary, you want me to get the snake? Mary, don't want to get the snake. Can't get the snake. <laughs> See, Mary, you think that's really a real snake. It ain't, honey. It's a rubber snake. But see, you think it's real, so it, you know, it's going to stir your emotion. So I can't use that as an example. Let's see. But that's a good example, isn't it? Yeah. I throw this thing over there. Mary would move. She knows. Say, she did. But what I'm saying is, if Justine took that rubber snake home and put it under your bed, <laughs> what did she say, Mary? <laughs> no kidding. I mean, if that thing's under the bed and you reach up under there and you're going to get your shoe, you think it's real, you'll have another door in your bedroom. And the devil knows that, and he deceives us to make us think we're sinners. And what do you feel? Dirty, condemned, no victory, second class or third class or whatever citizen. I'm not as good as anybody else. And you're walking around under this cloud of doom and despair. It affects your physical being. You end up in the hospital. Now, there's other things that you may end up in the hospital with, but this is definitely one thing that will, because I ended up in the hospital because of that. Anybody understand what I'm talking about? See, it goes that deep into our emotions and physical parts of our being. You'd be surprised how many people think they're sick and they're not really sick. How many of you ever woke up in the night and saw a, a stranger standing at the foot of your bed? Let me see. How many? Y'all never done that? <laughs> Maybe you're not far enough on the ladder. Okay. <laughs> Man, I wake up. I say, Susan, get him. Man, I've had all kind of stuff come at me. One night, Susan was laying in bed, and this devil was choking her. Yeah, choking her. She said, Jesus! He backed off just like that. See, there's a real spirit world out there. See, I know there's a heaven and a hell, because I've wrestled with principalities and powers. Hello, are you out there? That's what Paul said. I'm not too far out. I know. I've wrestled. I was sitting at a table. Susan was sitting at the table one day, and this woman started choking I knew exactly what it was. Her husband wasn't around, so I know it wasn't him.
How many would know what to do? All right, one, two, three. Yeah, well, Susan may know what to do. Man, we run out of that door fast, I tell you. <laughs> gotcha. No, we took the charge of that and commanded that. I mean, she's on the floor turning purple. We jumped on that demon like old hound dog jumping on a T-bone steak. Kicked him around and kicked him out. And she's, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, it's real. Yeah, it's real. All right. Let's go to the next one. Next verse. Got to move fast, fast. I ain't got no worry. But now, say everybody, but now we are discharged from the law and have terminated all in intercourse with the law, having died what once restrained and held us captives. Hello? Bob, what's got me captive? You're trying to reach God through the law. Well, let's try it again, Bob. Show him you can get to that top rail. Don't you push this over now. <laughs> now, wait a minute. I just read the scripture. I was discharging this thing. I ain't going to try that no more. Man, I've read the Bible. I'm free. I died to the law. Having died to what once restrained and held us captive, always trying to reach God and be good. And Oh, don't, don't you know, just like walk on a tight road. And man, I, 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 and boy, your whole body is getting all tensed up and anxiety. And this guy getting back to the hospital. I try to get him to get back in, into the graces of God. He said, no, it's too hard. And I knew exactly what his problem was. Because he, had, he was indoctrinated to that where you have to keep all of these. And if you fail in one... You lost again. I don't know where he, they, that's what many of the Pentecostal peoples believe, especially the old, older ones. I said, brother, you don't know the gospel. And I tried to share with him, you know, man, I've tried, <laughs> I've tried. I said, listen, you died to the law. You walk in the spirit. He's gentle. He's loving. He teaches you. He directs you. He guides you. He gives you insight. He empowers you. So getting connected with the Spirit of God. I've got to move fast. All right, let's read, finish reading that. So now we serve not under the obedience to the old code of written regulations, but under obedience to the prompting. Everybody say prompting of the Spirit in newness of life. You died to that. Now, let's learn how to walk in the Spirit. And when did we die to it? When Christ died. So now we serve not under the obedience to the old code of written regulations, but under obedience to the prompting. So everybody say prompting again. Prompting of the Spirit in newness of life. You're free. Say, I'm free. I'm free. I'm free from the, everyone's under the law. It's cursed. And Jesus took the curse. He kept the law for us. I don't have time to go through all the scriptures, but he 
Jesus took care of it for us. Whew, what a Savior we have. All right, is there another verse to that that we need to hit? Let's see, the, verse 7. What's the next one? 7-7. Seven, seven. When then he goes on, what then do we conclude? Is the law uh, identical with sin? Certainly not, no. But it rouses all of that power of sin in us. It makes us feel that we're just nothing but sinners now. We can't never do nothing right. Michelle blessed me, I think it was Sunday. You know, you can get on a kid too much. How many know that? Yeah. And what did Jonathan say to her? Anybody remember? Tell me, tell me back there, Rachel. Mama, did I do anything right today? God, did I do anything right today? Anybody out there? Walking under that type of condemnation, there is no liberty, there is no freedom in your spirit. Oh, man, when, you, when that revelation comes in, free, free. He set me free from that thing that kept me in captivity. Oh, the law was great and wonderful, but it has no power to regenerate your inner man. It has no power to cause you to be born again. You could keep them 24-7 all the days of your life, die and go to where? Huh? What? Go where? <laughs> I'm going to hold it, hold it to the fire. How you spell it? How you spell it? Huh? Hell. <laughs> now, let me say something. God has set us free from hell. Man, let's get all excited. Going to tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. Woo! Yeah. Hell is not for us because Christ set us free from the law and he set us free from hell. I didn't embarrass you, did I? <laughs> I don't mean to, but let's just have a good time. Don't you like to have a good time? Yeah, all right. In Jesus. I remember one time um, Michelle looked at me and, and I was supposed to give her a... a, a a scripture. I couldn't even remember my name. Huh? Isn't that true? <laughs> Give me five. All right. <laughs> Who am I going to get next? Yeah. Oh, man, I couldn't even think, what is my name? <laughs> All right, let's move on real quick. Like, hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. All right, now we're sons of God. <sighs> then he goes on, let's finish this. Certainly not. Nevertheless, it is, had not been for the law, I should not ha had recognized sin. Are right, you remember that? The law says covetous is sin. So I'm out here covenant it. Then I look at the law. Oh, it's telling me that I sin. You, we understand that? Or I'm out here telling lies. Of course, none of us do that. Have you ever told a lie and you say, why did I do that? I know why. You're scared your husband's going to spank you. <laughs> I'm scared Susan spank me, so I tell a lie every time. Wasn't me eating those cookies. Got cookies on. Anyway. <clears throat> it's by the law that shows us what sin is. But we don't need the law anymore to show us what sin is because we have the law giver living in us who is well able to let us know when we fall short of the glory of God. See, our faith has to be in Him now. Where's the law? It's gone. I don't need I don't. The lost person does. I don't need the law no more. We have Christ. We have the Holy Spirit living in us.
is our teacher. See, our faith goes into him now. And he will let you know, I guarantee you, if you do anything wrong, now you stop and think, he will let you know. Does anybody want to give a testimony? Don't everybody jump up at one time. Oh, I could tell you instance after instance of how the Holy showed Holy Spirit uh, showed showed I've done wrong. But anyway, aren't you glad you got the Holy Spirit now? Now you can relax. You can enjoy the Lord because he, He'll guide you. He'll direct you. He'll let you know. Okay. So let's just put it to the test. <laughs> All right, we're all, we're all at your house, and we're watching TV. Look, y'all see Rick back there smiling. I mean, uh, yeah, Rick Reed. And we, and then, you know, seriously, the advertisement is worse than the program sometimes, isn't it? You know what I mean? Now, I remember years ago, we used to have... Um, uh, I don't know how we got this, but we got a TV, and we got where th- these these films where naked women would come on the TV. You know what I mean? And uh, <coughs> and I was pretty young in the faith, you know, and uh, so I said, "Wow!" <laughs> and I'm holding the little thing in your hand. What do you call that? <laughs> is that what that is? <laughs> What's them buttons on there for? <laughs> you know, now, how many of you know that's flesh? Okay? But see, I hadn't quite broken away and understood it at that time, and, and my flesh was getting a lot out of that, and so I'm looking at it. But, you know, it's amazing. I did, you know, the Holy Spirit was saying, click it, Bob, click it. Somehow I could listen to him. <laughs> but Susan came in, click! What was you looking at? Huh? <laughs> looking at what? <laughs> I'm wondering how many's been there. I don't want to see. I don't want to see. But th- the other day I, I was over uh, at uh, my uh, granddaughter's trailer and I had to go by there and I ke- have you changed the filter in the air condition? I open it up. There's not even a filter in there, you know. <laughs> you know, of course it only costs five thousand dollars, you know. Anyway, <clears throat> so we go buy a filter, bring it in there. And, and, and the oldest son's about 21 now. He works at nighttime. He just woke up. And he's in there with his little, uh, what do you call that little thing that y'all are constantly looking at and phone. pointing your finger at it? Phone. Cell phone. Is that what that is? And the light. See, it's dark and then the light's on. So I come up like this. Let me see that, son. <laughs> I give it back to him. Now, He's 21. If, 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 if I would have said, son, shame on you. It won't do no good. At 21, not married, what do you expect? Huh? Huh? Tell me, daddy. <laughs> Tell us back there, mama. Huh? They're going for it. But along the way, the parent has to teach and instruct. Yeah, the kids fail just like we do sometimes. Aren't you glad for First John 1, 9? Yeah. But what I'm saying is that as you move along, the Holy Spirit will purify you. And you'll get that conviction. And you will understand conviction over condemnation. And you'll learn to obey God. Because the peace of God is better than the condemnation that your conscience puts out against you when you're doing something wrong. So, man, I'd rather have the peace of God now than that condemnation and looking at something that's temporal and baloney on it. Hello? You know, if I... No, I better not go that way. <sighs> Keep out of trouble. But it's true, but I'm not going to say it. Y'all want to hear it? No, I ain't going to touch it. Uh, (laughs) 
He said, now, if it had not been for the law, I would not have known or recognized sin or have known its meaning. Do we understand why the law was there given to us? Huh? But we're not under that. We don't need the law to tell us now. We have the Holy Spirit and we have the Word of God. Well, let's see. I shall not, hmm, manifestations of the Spirit. Everybody knows where that is. And in in manifestations of, uh, of the, the flesh. We know where that is, don't we? What would you say? Galatians 1? <laughs> 5, right. <laughs> See, it's all, it's all there. So we know, and the Holy Spirit helps us to walk a clean life. Now, here's what happens as we grow and mature in the Lord. You pass through that sin syndrome, and now you just want to please the Lord. You come to the realization someone says, well, is that sin? No, I don't think it's sin, but I don't think it will please the Lord. Anybody there yet? If you're there, raise your hand. See, you look at things like that now. See, Paul says, all things are lawful for me to do, but they're not expedient that I do them. They're not necessary. And, and, and if I did do them, if it would offend my brother, I, would, I wouldn't do that because it would offend my brother. And so we, we learn, the Holy Spirit teaches us to walk in the Spirit and just soak that peace of God. Just, oh, so wonderful to be free from all of that uh, pressure and strain and ungodly stuff and you just it's just walking close with the Lord and most of you understand that but it's done by the Holy Spirit now I got to move so fast oh Lord help me here help me Lord Jesus let me finish that uh, I would not have known about covetousness would have not had no consciousness of sin or sense of, of guilt if the law had not repeatedly said, you shall not covet and have an evil desire for one thing or another. Everybody see that? That's what we learned from the law. But we don't have to learn that from the law now. We have the Holy Spirit living in us. The lawgiver and the law of God, according to Hebrews, has been uh, written on our hearts and our minds now. Everybody know where that is in the scripture? I wish we had time to turn to it. That's in Hebrews might be 10, somewhere right in there. Okay, might be uh, 9. Of, i got to move here. All right, now, let me get over here in the Spirit. <sighs> got to move fast. Turn to Philippians real quick, like there on the board. <sighs> Philippians. And i got to go through this pretty fast. Philippians chapter 2. And so here we are. In, uh, in Ephesians, <laughs> who that? <laughs> that you? <laughs> in Ephesians says, now notice this, over there we were climbing, trying to reach God by human effort. Who raised us up into the heavens? Jesus did. Ephesians 2, put Ephesians uh, chapter 2 about how we were raised up. I forget what verse, it's probably about maybe 8 or 9, you know, R.J., Ephesians chapter 2, <coughs> we've been raised up to sit in heavenly places. Ephesians chapter 2, I can't turn around, hello Ephesians. And he, now notice this, and how did I get up here? He raised me up here. How would you get up here? He raised us up together with him and made us sit down together, giving us joint seating with him in the heavenly spree by virtue of our being in Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one. Now how did we get up here in this position? Everybody say He. Jesus. So you don't have to struggle. He did it. We have to accept it by faith. This is where we're seated. All right, now I could go on with that. I wish we had time to do it, but the time is short, so I'm cutting it short, but I'm going to be working on this for some. 
So anyway, in Ephesians chapter 2, I want to start with verse 4. All right. Philippians 2, 4. And go right on down the line real quick, like. Let each of you esteem and look upon and be concerned for not merely his own interests. What? What? But also each for the interests of others. Hello? That's real Christianity. Go to the next verse, and I've got to move fast. Let this same attitude and purpose and humble mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus. Let him be your example of humility. Next. All right. Who, although being essentially one with God and in the form of God, possessing the fullness of the attributes which make God, makes God God, did not think this equality with God and was a thing to be eagerly grasped or retained. Next. But stripped himself of all privileges and rightful dignity so as to assume the guise of a servant, slave, in that he became like man and was born a human being. Next. Eight. And after he had appeared in human form, he abased and humbled himself still further and carried his obedience to the extreme of death, even to the uh, death of the cross. So God raised us up, and so I humble myself. God says, go down there, Bob, and humble yourself like Jesus did and become a servant and tell the people about Jesus you don't have much time, 60 or maybe 65 years. Some of you don't have that. But anyway, <laughs> well, that's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you, you think this is better than heaven? Then you read the book. Anyway, you're not there yet, but you'll get there. So we humble ourselves. See, we're seated up there. But he said, now come on down there like Jesus did. Just like have this same mind in you, just because I've raised you up there as my son, now you do like my son. He volunteered to come down, and we volunteered to come back down here and tell people about Jesus. Tell them that Jesus loves them, and Jesus has provided salvation for them and has given them an inheritance kept in heaven. So we're down here. All of us was raised, and we all come back down now. But you're only going to be down here for a little while. <sighs> yeah, your kids are young. Before you know, they're young. Pretty soon, you'll be the kid, and they'll be the parent. <laughs> Susan and me have experienced it in that now. <laughs> oh, yeah. They tell us what to do. Being a peacemaker, you know. Dad, you need to sit down and eat that ice cream. You're getting pale. Well, okay. <laughs> I know some of you just can't wait till your kid grows up. When they're small, you can pretty well control them. At a certain age, they'll try to control you. Of course, very subtle, though. Now, you've got to know it's very subtle. We won't go there. Okay. We have humbled ourselves now. That's why we're down here. I mean, God could have left us up there. Well, what are we down here to, you know, just, well, you know, we want to raise our kids and, and everything and teach them about Jesus, and, but to do his will to serve him. And we've been delivered from all these things to serve him. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad you're free? And the Bible says in Galatians 5, 1, stand fast in that liberty wherewith Christ has set you free and be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. And the biggest job is to maintain ourselves and keep us out of the bondage of the world, the flesh, and the devil. But let's finish reading this. This is still good. Go to, go to verse 9. Therefore, therefore, because he stooped so low, who's he? 
Christ, God has highly exalted him and has freely bestowed on him the name that is above every name. To the next verse. And that at the name of Jesus, every knee should, uh, should and must bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Next verse. And every tongue, frankly and openly, confess and acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And then after a while, you find out that all of a sudden, uh, your, your physical body stops breathing. And I declare we're right back up here again. Hallelujah with a glorified body. Woo! Hallelujah. I need to get a rope. See if we can get a rope. Where's Rick at? Fix a rope here. I can, you know. Okay. All right. That, that's it. Let's close down. You got the picture? You got the picture? Are you free tonight? Absolutely. Free to serve the Lord. Love one another. God bless you and have a good evening. And stay off those ladders. They're very dangerous. <laughs>